Hi, David O'Dell here with O'Dell Complete Concrete. You may have seen some of these videos because this is part four of the four part series. This is the actual laying of the sod, prepping the soil. Part one, we show water main break. Part two is the setup. Part three is the pouring. And now here we are at the end product, which is part four. This just so shows a little bit of the uh, soil prep. We're um, getting down some of this native soil about three inches below top of lawn. That way we could put in a, a few inches of uh, blended topsoil. Also, we're not doing your typical um, spray nozzles. We're going to do an underground drip system that will water the lawn from underneath. So that's a good way to conserve water. The spacing on these uh, drip hoses, half inch drip hose with um, emitters every one foot built into it, is uh, one foot on centers. Now here's the blended topsoil. We've got about three and a half yards there. Now here's all the drip hose the homeowner put in. Now all we have to do is cover that with the topsoil and we're ready to lay sod. He hasn't connected that uh, pipe to the actual um, timer yet or valve right now just hooked up to the water hose just to get it the sod down and another weekend we'll put the timers in and the valve there's your built-in emitters I was talking about and they're about they're spaced about one foot apart now we're gonna put this topsoil about we want it to be about a half inch, three quarters of an inch below your finished floor around the perimeter where you're meeting the concrete edges. That way it'll flush out when we drop the sod in. You can use a compactor or a water roller to really pack this in before you lay this sod if you want we um, didn't do that here we're just going to be real careful and get it uh, right on the money now you could uh, potentially use this the same soil and just add some compost and rototill a little more work in the prep but uh, that can be done as well in this case we needed soil anyway so we just brought blended in sometimes if I don't need soil I'll actually rototill and just bring a minimal amount of compost or some type of amendments whatever depending on what the, I think the soil may need and then I'll rototill it in but we were low everywhere here so we just added it pre 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 blended and ready to roll So the sod's not going to be coming on this particular day. We just got the topsoil in. And this way we can flood it and let it compact over the weekend. And now the day of the sod, we're just going to, where the dirt had settled from the watering, we're just going to touch it up a little bit with the long rake. And then start laying sod down. And here's my granddaughter came out to the job site with us to, uh, check it out and it's about uh, 11 o'clock so it's pretty hot at this point at this time of day already right around 90 ish humidity at about 70 
So I'm gonna water this down as soon as I drop it on this hot dirt. I'm gonna uh, start putting water on it as I go on out. I don't like to lay the water first because I'm gonna get kind of muddy dropping the sod. Plus, it's gonna make footprints and stuff. So we'll water it on the way out, and then after we get it all laid, we'll water it real heavy. The way I do these sod pieces is every other one I start with a half. That way um, my seams aren't lined up. They're staggered a half, half chunk of sod. The nice thing about um, being a concrete finisher is my trowels are real sharp. So I use them to cut the sod and they work like a charm. I've tried a lot of things cutting sod with razor knives and different things, but I found the trowel to be the best. I believe this is about the fourth or fifth day after the actual pour of the most strips and driveway additions. So you can see how that red really lightened it up from video three to this video, which is about a four day. -er. Hi, David O'Dell here. We just completed putting this sod down. We put about two inches of blended soil on top of the native and uh, this is going to be a really hardy lawn. A little watering for the first couple weeks, three times a day. Uh, and you can decrease it, you know, gradually to taper off to about, you know, twice a week, heav heavily. And then uh, good to go. This stuff stays green year round. It's a uh, marathon two. They have marathon one, which, which was the original. And then they went to the two. And then they have the three. The uh, one is the hardiest. That has the thickest blades. And then as you go to two and three, they get thinner blades. And... They're not quite as hardy, but this is a good one for pets. Um, if you have pets, kids, a lot of foot traffic, this is pretty good stuff. And it's a nice dark green. So I always go with this one, Marathon 2. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one. So we had a little bit of extra sod. You can see it down there at the parkway. We're going to leave that for the homeowner in case he has some use for it, maybe in the backyard or however he's going to dress that parkway up. He may put a couple strips of sod every so often and gravel in between I'm not real sure the plans there but anyway there is some extra and you can use that anyway that's what it looks like under underground watering system monolithic color concrete pour banded marathon 2 Fescue. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. That about wraps this one up. If you like them, subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. This was the wraps up part four of four. Have a good one.